Welcome back. You're watching Rise and Shine. It's a Friday morning. I've told you that we'll be back with three special guests, and we're going to speak about theater, and it's kind of a different kind of a theater altogether. So you'll get to know about it. So it's time for us to welcome Marcel Atrovic, who's here with us in the studio, along with Gayatri Kemadasa and Mahesh Umagilia. Good morning. Good morning. I hope I got all your names right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> So it's been a great pleasure to have you with us in the studio, Marcela, and uh, also Gayatri and Mahesh. And uh, we would like to speak about this different kind of theatre. Mm. And you said that this is going to be the main discussion this morning. Mm. So tell us about your involvement here in Sri Lanka first. Ah, uh, sure. Well, um, I've been here for four months, uh, which has been very exciting. I was brought here on two grants, uh, one from the Theatre Communications Group and one from the Network of Ensemble Theatres. Um, I came here to work with one company called Floating Space Theatre. I taught at the Colombo International Theatre Festival, um, as well as have taught for the American Centre at uh, young people in different parts of the country. But primarily, I was also here to work with Gayatri. Um, Gayatri and I had the opportunity to work together in the United <coughs> States, where I, um, where I hail from. Um, Gayatri was a Fulbright scholar a few years ago, and we were able to work on her original opera called Poulan Devi. Uh, and now being here, we knew we were going to find some way to work together. And uh, it's been very exciting, um, partly uh, uh, sort of re-establishing uh, my relationship with Gayatri and also getting to know Mahesh, who's the choreographer of a piece that we've been working on called When Caged Birds Sing. Um, that piece has allowed us to integrate uh, musical composition, choreography, stage drama, uh, poetry and spoken word. And while I say integrate, what we've also done is this piece brings the audience into the performance space and changes that typical dynamic of sort of a proscenium uh, stage with audience on the other side. And the audience can sometimes check in or check out when you're integrated into the performance space, what we found, the feedback that we have received, especially from a recent university performance, is that it really required the audience to stay attentive, to really be paying attention to what was happening because they couldn't really escape. <laughs> so what do you mean to say, like, sometimes people might even get a little bit bored and get a way out of it with this new concept that like you are always involved in it, like, you, as you said, you can't get a way out of it. This is, this is true. Yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think that it's, it's very exciting. I mean, we, we, we try to respect if, if people really, you know, we, we honor people's boundaries, but at the same time, it blurs those boundaries a little bit and encourages people to really absorb what is happening around them. Um, and especially because of the way we're working, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of stage dynamic, and, and Gayatri's music, um, I'm a big fan of Gayatri's, and I hope more people will be soon, because her work is, is really imaginative um, and, and really exciting. So integrating all those different pieces, it requires the audience to, um, it actually invites the audience to uh, engage. Uh, Marcella, just quickly, obviously looking at the Sri Lankan community the culture, Sri Lankan people are not the really forward people who would mm. want to get on stage straight away when they're, when they're, when they're audience. <coughs> How has the response been that, like, well, for you with uh, Sri Lankan audience? It's an excellent point that you make because I've been in situations, be it a press, a press conference or a teaching situation, where suddenly there's an opportunity to ask questions and I'll get, we say in America, crickets. You hear like almost nothing except for the crickets. <laughs> um, and we were, we were a little concerned yeah. that, you know, in this last university performance, how would people respond? Well, I'll be honest, the question and answer period was twice the length of the performance. People were really engaged. I found that uh, the audience had questions. They, they were commenting on what they saw, and they were understanding it. They were really, and it's an abstract piece. It's not a linear narrative piece. Um, and so all of a sudden, I felt like, Oh my goodness, some, we've created something, there's something invisible in theatre, I, I think it's a little magic, and it happens in between the lines, and so I think that that magic happened in When Caged Birds Sing, because all of a sudden audience members were saying, oh my goodness, I see myself in that, I saw my grandmother, I saw my sister, I started to think about 
how in my culture I see that there is a hierarchy and here in this room there was none. We were all equal. So it was really exciting. I have to say I was I have often experienced that uh, in the Sri Lankan communities I've worked in, people are less inclined to speak in the group but will come up to me afterwards and say something. But in this performance that wasn't the case. People were very um, outspoken. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah, and that's obviously you've uh, been part and parcel of uh, Marcella's work. Uh, just tell us what your involvement really is and how you are contributing to its uh, this. Yeah, well, uh, we initially performed this in October and uh, I wanted to create a gallery piece. That means uh, with performers, as Marcella said, like choreography, music, poets. And uh, so to, how to bring all that, integrate all that together and bring it to an audience where we are interacting with the audience also. And uh, that's how the initial concept came. And one thing, just for one, something that you mentioned, there is no stage. It's a gallery. They, like, we are all on equal level oh, wow. with the audience. So, uh, like, it's... Just to interrupt you, uh, yeah. that, there are some clips also that uh, okay. the yeah. audience can take a look at uh, on the, the preparation and the remote. You can still go on. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, there is no stage. We are all on equal level. And so the interaction, like every performance is unique because sometimes we don't know how the audience would react. So, so <clears throat> like what I did was like I brought the con concept and I asked each artist to collaborate and uh, to in, within that concept. Mm -hmm. And how, how, what is their voice? How would they speak out if they had to speak out within that concept? Mm -hmm. so, and uh, Mahesh, tell us a little bit about your involvement and about the choreography, how you plan it. Yeah, I, I was like involving with uh, choreography. It, actually, it was really difficult to choreograph something really set in this piece because we don't know how the audience would react for what. Then, So we had to leave some space for actors and uh, singers to improvise within the choreography. So we kind of, we choose very... Uh, the movements we choose, uh, we, we were thinking a lot before choosing movement because we had to choose the correct movement. So that you can but, accommodate more people. Yeah, more on. people into that. And, uh, so, uh, a more simpler movement that would go into the, into the audience so and, <laughs> and the, the actors also can uh, improvise within that sometimes. So we, we didn't know until the audience... Uh, enter into this how will this happen so mm. so my involvement with uh, movements were like that okay so but uh, this has not been the usual stuff for you when it comes to choreography i guess so yeah in sri lanka i have never done something like that but i had experiences of gallery performances in germany uh, with a dance company i was working with so uh, when Gayatri invited me to do this, I was so thrilled to do this in Sri Lanka because it is, uh, I knew I had, I have had this experience in Germany and to give that experience to my audience, it was, uh, for me, I was so thrilled to work with Gayatri in this piece. I must add, like, um, as with Marcela and also with Mahesh, his, his choreography, is, I wouldn't say it's simple, it's quite it has a lot of depth in it and a lot of thinking. And, uh, yeah, and, like, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. yeah, like I said, people wouldn't realize it's got so much depth and so much work put into it, but when yeah. you look at it, it yeah. looks so simple uh, choreography yeah. that's done. Yeah. So that's, what, yeah. that's, so that's his expertise to bring it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. And also because he had to work with singers, where, like, breathing, and that that's very important. So how to, like, while you're performing and dancing like how, how should you breathe and so he had a lot of uh, okay space to breathe yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and also it's very important phrasing and everything yeah and also we had to reach people and we had to cross their personal boundaries, boundaries also so uh, uh, then uh, audience members also are in a little bit of uh, danger zone mm -hmm. and at the same time actors also they have to break their personal space to enter into the Weavers. space of viewers so we we put ourselves into a little danger also mm. so it's so <laughs> fragile kind of at that, <laughs> yeah that <laughs> moment is so fragile we don't know how will they react maybe they can slap us <laughs> We don't know, so 
So far, nobody so has far, slept. No, so far, nobody has slept. Come to that experience that somebody called next to try to slap anyone. Anyway. <laughs> We've had quite a few people freaking yeah. out so a little. What right? are the breathing space that you would give? Like, say, obviously, now your target is like, say, or hoping that the audience will respond to it. What mm. happens if there is not no response going in? Like, what would be the negative part of it? Like, well, I actually could speak a little to that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The way that we stay again, each space that this performs in, it will happen a little differently based on the the architecture, based on the human beings. Um, So this last time uh, we started and most of the performers were inside the space, but I was actually outside uh, in the lobby. People, audience didn't know I was about to perform. And there were a number of university students. um, And when I started to sing and throw myself around the staircase, some of them were giggling. Um, because they didn't know what to expect, and this was foreign, um, <laughs> and aside from me being foreign. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and But what was interesting is the, the those that were the most uncomfortable and were giggling were the ones that I got closest to, and almost... Uh, demanded that they focus by the time people were inside the space um it it really changed and i guess the one other thing like because of this space so there was a moment where we anticipated with mahesh's choreography that we were sort of grabbing these strings these ropes that we were using and connecting the audience to one another, tying them to one another. But we didn't know what would happen with real audience. And what ended up happening was actually so much more than had ever happened in rehearsal because suddenly my character was untying people. And each time I did, I suddenly made eye contact and had the softness of hands and was communicating on a very deep level with the individuals who had been tied that had all been imaginary in rehearsal. <laughs> um, so it actually, I think, was was very exciting. And it, again, while I spoke to what it demanded of the audience, it really demanded of the performers uh, a very deep-rooted commitment because to stay grounded in your work while interacting with variables, be, be they human, um, uh, it really requires you to um, stay connected and committed to the work that you're doing. Each person is certainly different, so Absolutely. you've got to you did, blend yeah, with them. Sorry, yeah. uh, you did mention about the rehearsal part of it. Mm. Like, so obviously, there's not much rehearsal that you could go through when you're doing something like this. So obviously, the stage, the main actors would do this rehearsal part, mm. but then involving the uh, audience is going to be the hard part because they wouldn't rehearse that. Right. As you mentioned yeah. it's imaginary part. Yeah, so imaginary. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's where the breathing room, I yeah. think, yeah, in yeah. some yeah. ways. That mm-hmm. we, we rehearse and rehearse and get them, and especially the music. And, and again, just to say that it really Gayatri is the centerpiece of this. Um, and, and the music is something that um, if people do have an opportunity to see this in performance, it's exceptional. The, the singers, the, the sound, the um, sort of, I think uh, there's a place where it's, it's, it's traditional and it's new. It's something else altogether. It's familiar and yet it's a new place. And, and that's really, uh, I feel, a very exciting piece of this that is very rehearsed. And the, the staging, we would rehearse it knowing that this is exactly this way except that we'll be in a much bigger space and people will be in between us. <laughs> so there is some variable. And I think it would be great if you, if you could speak a little bit about the actors. Yeah, we have, we have actually a great team working with us. And um, Dulanjali, she's the main lead singer. And then we have uh, Kaushalya Nadi and... Uh, and uh, yes. Ureshika, thank you. <laughs> uh, they are the main three singers. And also we have Dilushi, Nadi Kamali, and uh, Prabha, Prabha, and mm-hmm. Nuan. Prabha. So we have uh, some people who come from, obviously, singing background and theatre background, and some coming from only theatre background. And then we also have Kumar, Kumari Gamage, and Kalpana Ambrose, who are the main uh, two poetesses that uh, joined us in this uh, and mm-hmm. musicians. Uh, musicians, yeah. Suru Kumar Singha and uh, Chintaka. Yeah, so <laughs> you can you remind us? <laughs> <laughs> I hope we didn't forget. Whole, uh, guys, the whole production is based on music together with theatre, is it? like Music, choreography, theatre, poetry. poetry. Yep. So the music is the one that plays a major part to get the message across, to get the audience involved, or is it the... Uh, I think all of us. Yeah. All of us, yeah. Everybody yeah. plays a vital, vital range. range. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't okay. imagine, like, 
And I think like all the memories of one. Yeah, yeah, all the lines were blurred, so you can't really say what is this. Yeah, you can't say a drama or opera. What do they call this? Yeah, you can't say. What do they call this? A performance piece. Yeah, actually, we we did have an issue when we were trying to translate into Sinhala because the word does not exist as yet, but it does. Since last week, <laughs> yeah, we created it <laughs> because gallery performance is a new uh, way of performing in Sri Lanka. So there was no. I was searching a word, so then there was no word for gallery performance. So yeah. we had to create a word in Sinhalese. Yeah. So then, in the future, people might use this use word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you come up with a word. Yeah, we were saying to, uh, like in Sinhalese, uh, kalagarita ranga. Kalagaritaranga. Yes. Yeah. So if you hear yeah. that word, because in I was future. having a time when I made the introduction, I'm like, what do I call what it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Music, dance, in the home of the people. But then I had yeah. to say everything. And especially <laughs> like. Uh, This is kind of new experience for Sri Lankan audience. So we had to teach uh, the audience before the performance. We had to give little workshop for them how to uh, engage with this performance because people were expecting something they can sit and watch. So that's what they used they, to. Yeah, so they are, that's, that's what, what used people to. used yeah. to. Yeah, so yeah. Drama or stage, you go exactly. there and just sit and watch. Sit yeah, back, answer so, your calls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So while they're standing in the fire before they enter into the gallery, we had to go there and give them little kind of a workshop how to uh, go and see this performance because they they can't stand uh, in one place and watch this. If they can't see something, they had to wa- walk everywhere and. They have freedom to walk and uh, watch Overall, the performance. Yeah. They can choose what they are going to watch how, or how they participate. Yeah, how they right. participate. And uh, you've been performing uh, for quite some time here in Sri Lanka. So tell mm. us about the performances you've done. Is it the same concept, or have you changed it? Well, you know, I think a lot of the work I have been doing has been teaching, um, and and it's but it's very interesting because I think. One of the things that's exciting about this work, when Caged Bird Sing, is it's very much in line with how I work. Um, I tend to, uh, especially with with original generative work, I'm very interested in uh, physical theater. I think that sound that is not text based is important. I feel that some text is important. So um, I've Uh, actually, in in America, aside from being a classically trained actress and and dancer, um, I'm a director and choreographer, but a, a performer. But also, as I do classical work, but I'm very interested in uh, new work. And in doing that, that has very much been how I've approached it. It's been through these sort of multifaceted layers, um, using sound, using song, using poetry, using text, and using uh, floor planning, stage choreography. And that, I think, is an interesting way to get a message through because then you can integrate different ideas. I feel like You know, this piece, one of the things that was also, aside from the structure, um, one of the things that w- was engaging and interesting and exciting for me was the content. Um, and and in this particular piece, you know, we're looking at, at women, we're looking at oppression, we're looking at struggle, we're looking at the fight for freedom and and suffering um, and hope. <laughs> uh, and, and that, for me, feels important. And so with... Uh, work that I've done here in Sri Lanka as well as back in the United States, um, I feel like finding, uh, addressing content through these different sort of performing channels uh, usually can create something, uh, again, I use that word magic because there's something magical and invisible, intangible that can be created when you are addressing Ideas that are important to you and of value uh, through through the arts. All right. Uh, so you've been doing work for various various places. Just describe what are the places that you've been cho- uh, choosing to do your theatre, well, this uh, performance acts like gallery performance. Gallery, gallery, gallery performance. performance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, <Well done. laughs> we are hoping to perform at uh, all the universities in Sri Lanka, and uh, hopefully we also want to have another performance in Colombo. So so we haven't big, fixed dates. So you want to do a big show in Colombo before you wind up things uh, with your... A thing. big show, well, yeah, performance. <laughs> <To get> the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mainly universities, they're planning to tour in the country and, yeah. So where do you want to take it from here onwards? Like, so you want to take Universities to, to other you, levels? Other, any other level that you uh, Hopefully abroad. We are yeah. working on it this year. So, yeah. And for me, I would like to take this to more more rural settings yeah. and maybe out of the gallery and perform outside. Yeah. So it will be also so interesting if we can go take this to much rural settings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Master, I think time is definitely catching up on us. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, need, but but quickly, if you can just quickly give give us a, a a message across to people mm. uh, on uh, what they need to do to get involved in this, or what what they need to do to be involved in theatre. Sure, I think that um, I think one everyone, whether they uh, are self defined or self aspiring as artists, everyone has a voice, and everyone has. Uh, experiences that matter um so i think you know for artists i think people should train find gifted uh people that they can they can work with because if you can find someone who is at least as talented or more than you then you will continue to rise in your craft but i think uh as as individuals i have found so many sri lankans to be insightful intelligent uh, full of a, a wealth of experiences. And so I feel like it's most important to uh, say yes. Say yes and, and to giving voice to your ideas um, and, and make manifest your dreams. Nice. Uh, <laughs> really nice. <laughs> All right, uh, I think it's time for us to say our bye-byes for or Friday morning, but before that, very big thank you for coming on board Rise and Shine and sharing this very important message across to people on what you plan to do, the yeah. gallery theatre or <laughs> how you would put it around, I don't know, or put it in your word, the singular word that you mentioned, the Kala 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 Kala. Kala. <laughs> All, All right, the best uh, with that and I hope uh, people in Sri Lanka will adopt to it and mm. you know we will have more gallery performances here mm. in Sri Lanka. Thank you so much Marcelo, thank you Gayatri, thank, thank you Mahesh for being a part thank of the you. show. Thank you. All right. It's time for us to say bye-bye. It's a Friday morning. See you again tomorrow.